18 years ago, right after America, no, not that America, this America had voted Kaser back into the Big Brother 6 house, an unassuming Julie Chen whisked the players into a box in the backyard and started an HOH competition called The Pressure Cooker. Big Brother didn't know it yet, but they had just kicked off what would become the most infamous and talked about competition of the entire series, and that's not even me exaggerating for dramatic effect. This competition is the real deal, and what makes it so iconic is its simplicity. Every player holds down a button and the last player to let go wins. It's strictly a battle of wills, a how bad do you want it comp. Unlike the wall comps, which continuously push you to your strength's end, the pressure cooker is all about mental endurance. It's just you and a button against everyone else. In Big Brother 6, we saw Jennifer outlast Kaser to win the pressure cooker after 13 hours and 53 minutes, and it has held the record as the longest Big Brother competition by over four hours. The competition itself was fantastic, legendary, and iconic. So it was a big shock to us fans when Big Brother never brought it back. Season after season, we would eagerly wait for the pressure cooker to come back, but to no avail. I finally had to accept the fact that Big Brother was simply not interested in having endurance competitions last longer than two hours, meaning that we'd probably never see the pressure cooker again. But I was wrong. After 18 long years on a seemingly random BB25 eviction episode, Julie Chen said five words I never expected to hear. The pressure cooker is back. For years, fans have been clamoring for the return of the legendary BB Pressure Cooker competition. Well, next Thursday, the Pressure Cooker is back with a scary verse twist. I could not believe my ears. Finally, after all this time, I had the opportunity to watch an entire Pressure Cooker play out live on the feeds, and I was beyond excited. However, I did hold some reservations. Julie mentioned that there was going to be a scary verse themed twist to the competition, and that had me worried. What needless addition were they going to add to the comp? Was this just an obvious way for the producers to speed things up? I was scared that this thing that I had been waiting forever for was going to be a drastic disappointment, but luckily for me, I couldn't have been more wrong. The revenge of the pressure cooker was absolutely incredible. The twists were actually good, the theming was downright perfect, and this iteration was, dare I say, maybe better than the original. Let's go to the start of the competition and dissect everything that happened in this long-awaited competition up through its shocking finish. This is how the revenge of the pressure cooker fell just minutes shy of making history. When the pressure cooker was first played, I was three years old, and now I'm in the pressure cooker the most iconic competition in Big Brother history. All that matters is how much you want to win that head of household. So, as I mentioned before, it was revealed that there would be a twist to the concept of the pressure cooker for Big Brother 25. The original pressure cooker had the house guests in a clear box outside where they were not only given hourly updates on how much time had passed, but they were also able to watch the sun go down and rise again, which gave them a very accurate estimate of how long they had been inside the pressure cooker. But for Big Brother 25, they eliminated any sense of time perception. The house guests were in a completely enclosed box with no access to the outside, so they couldn't rely on nature to let them know the time. Plus, once any eliminated players went into the house, they weren't allowed to go back into the pressure cooker, so there was nobody to tell the players in the box how much time had passed. Already, I like this, as it's another mental obstacle for the players to overcome. Another part of the twist, which, if you've been watching the footage, I'm sure you've been able to guess it, is that it was pitch black inside the box. Throughout the competition, Big Brother would shut the lights off completely, making the players practically blind and adding to the scary verse atmosphere that was in the air. The set design felt straight out of a Saw movie. It was freezing, it was dark, jump scare noises would go off every now and then, and I was absolutely in love with the final product that they came up with. They turned the pressure cooker from just a plain old box into an ominous torture chamber. And you know what? I feel like I give Big Brother a hard time for their ideas in set design sometimes, but they really knocked it out of the park with this one. I'm scared. Like, scared, scared. Stop looking at me. Okay, 
Now that I've gone over the pressure cooker itself, let's take a look at the actual competition. There were 12 players inside the pressure cooker, and since the consensus house target Heisem had just been evicted, it felt almost as if this was a soft reset in the BB25 house. But that's not to say that there weren't many intertwining house dynamics still at play that pushed many of the house guests to go for the win. Cameron had survived the block in consecutive weeks, so he wanted to win to put himself in the driver's seat. But on the flip side of that coin, many players didn't trust Cameron. So players like Sari, Izzy, Jared, and maybe even Mimi and Corey were going to try and outlast Cameron in red to ensure that they didn't win. Then you have someone like Jack, who was in a precarious position the prior week and feasibly could have been evicted. So he and Blue were gunning for the win to swing the power back in their direction. Then, there's Matt, who's been waiting for a chance to dig deep and compete after losing two of the people he was closest to in the beginning of the game, so he was also in it to win it. And lastly, there's America, who not only has a history of competing in long endurance challenges, as she lasted over 46 hours and placed 14th in the Mr. Beast finger on the app competition a couple of years ago, but America was also recognizing the power forces in the house and she was ready to make a big move. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that every single person had a reason to fight for this HOH outside of like maybe Bowie Jane. So this competition was going to last for a long time. This HOH competition is do or die. In the pressure cooker with the chicken. <laughs> The competition went underway and the house guests looked solid. They were able to press down on the button as opposed to pressing in on the button, which made things easier than the last time. But everyone is susceptible to slipping. After one hour and 17 minutes, Jared was the first player to mess up as his hand slipped off of his button, eliminating him from the comp. Now, I know I'm doing a lot of explaining, but there are still two more stipulations to the pressure cooker that I haven't mentioned yet. The first thing is that the players are only allowed to exit the pressure cooker in groups of three. So, even though Jared was the first out of the comp, he still had to wait for two more people to drop before he could actually leave the room and go inside the house. The second thing is that every time a player dropped out, they were forced to open an envelope. Sometimes the contents of the envelope were good, but sometimes they were bad. It was just another exciting way to make things even more interesting throughout the challenge. Jared's envelope was supposed to be a bad one as it revealed a container of snakes in the center of the pressure cooker. But these snakes were entirely contained and were pretty much just an extra decoration, if not even a bit of entertainment. So maybe it was actually a good thing. Now, not just five minutes after Jared dropped, Sari dropped as well, making her the second eliminated player. Her envelope awarded her a six pack of beer, which I know is simple, but hey, I would not be upset with that prize. Congratulations, you've won a six pack of beer. Great. I'm not a real drinker, and if I am, it's a like cute little cocktail with like fruit flavors or something like that. Anyways, that was two down, nine more to go. The room of the pressure cooker was freezing and boring, so to combat the elements, some of the players were quietly dancing to themselves in the dark to keep themselves awake and active. One house guest who was doing the most was, to nobody's surprise, Izzy, but this actually ended up being her downfall as her hand slipped while she was moving and grooving at the 3 hour and 55 minute mark. Just like that, there were now 3 players out of the competition, those being Sari and two of her children. It was quite the interesting trio to be out first, as they were clearly three of the most prominent power players of the season, well, two of them and Jared, and having all three of them out so early on indicated that there may be some sort of power shift in the week. However, in terms of the pressure cooker, this convinced me that the competition was going to be over way faster than I anticipated. In Big Brother 6, it took over six hours before the first player had dropped out, but this was now three players out before the four hour mark. Plus, with Izzy's envelope unleashing loud rock music and incredibly annoying flashing strobe lights, I was worried that players were going to start dropping left and right. But the house guests were here to prove me wrong. One hour passed, then another, and another one. I think at around the six hour mark, Matt told the rest of the players that he really needed to pee, but instead of dropping out so he could go, he just turned around and peed right there while the other players closed their eyes. It had been nearly five hours since Izzy had dropped and these house guests were making it clear that they were here to play and they were not budging. 
However, it was apparent that fatigue was starting to set in hard, making it that much more difficult to fully concentrate. The first real sign of the elements taking effect happened at the 8 hour and 35 minute mark when Bowie Jane lost her focus for just a moment and her fingers slipped off the button, eliminating her from the competition. Luckily for her, she didn't have too much time to be sad because her envelope revealed that she had won an actual pressure cooker for her home kitchen. What a steal. About an hour after Bowie fell, Matt let go of his button too, making it look like it was a small slip up while in actuality claiming to have thrown the competition as he wanted to avoid putting a target on his back. Matt's envelope unleashed a swarm of flies into the pressure cooker, which was a callback to the original's first punishment. However, what's kind of funny and a little morbid is that I'm pretty sure most of the flies had died before being unleashed. As I mentioned, it was really cold in there, and I think the majority of the flies froze to death before they were released from their entrapment, so even though the episode portrayed it as a ton of bugs flying rampant around the cooker, it was probably only just a few of them. One of my favorite things about the original pressure cooker, the flies. Anyways, not just 30 minutes after Matt dropped and right after the house guest had reached the 10 hour mark, Red fell on his butt while squatting down. It was a rule that you could not sit or kneel throughout the comp, so Red was eliminated once he slipped and fell backwards. Don't feel bad for Red though, because his envelope earned him not just a new home theater, but also one whole year of Paramount Plus with Showtime. Seriously though, you're telling me that CBS doesn't even give their players the ability to watch their season back after it's over for free? They have to pay for it just like the rest of us? That is comically barbaric. Paramount Plus. <laughs> the brand new state-of-the-art home theater and a year-long subscription to Paramount Plus with Showtime. Regardless, with Red gone, this meant that half the players had been eliminated at this point. At the same time, it was around here that it became clear to us fans that this was no longer just a battle for HOH. This was becoming a battle for the longest competition in Big Brother history. The original pressure cooker clocked in at 13 hours and 53 minutes, which no other competition has even come close to beating. But after 12 hours in this pressure cooker, there were still six players left standing. There were less than two hours standing in the way of a nearly 20-year-old Big Brother record being broken, and I could almost taste it. But to my dismay, the players began dropping like flies, no pun intended, making me ever so worried that maybe the record wasn't such a guarantee. At 12 hours and 17 minutes, Corey purposely let go after realizing that he had likely proven that he was a good competitor to his allies while also being confident that the remaining players would keep him safe and maybe even make a big move. Then, at 12 hours and 44 minutes, Blue's hand slightly came off of the button, ending her chances at winning HOH. This isn't cute. I didn't even know my hand came off the buzzer. I'm out, but Bestie Jag is still in the game and I know he could win this. But we're not done yet, because then, to Blues and to a large chunk of the audience's dismay, Chicken, jo Chicken Jag also let go of the button after practically falling asleep while standing up, eliminating him from the competition just six minutes after Blue. I had been uber confident half an hour ago that the record would be broken, but in what felt like a blink of an eye, three players had dropped out leaving just Mimi, America, and Cameron left standing with a little over an hour left on the clock. Now, to be fair, these were the three players that I had the most confidence in to win after watching them compete in the beginning of the comp. Mimi had been a freaking statue in there, and she had hardly moved at all throughout the competition. I knew that America had it in her to hold on for hours longer, as she had done something like this before and was also looking really rock solid. And then, of course, you had Cameron, who was practically the only player in the house who really knew what it felt like to have their life hanging in the balance come eviction night, and there was nobody more determined to win HOH than him. So, with these three players remaining, I was still feeling somewhat confident that they had the record in the bag. All they had to do was hang on. We are down to the final three. I think that I have a real shot at this. All I need to do is hang on. Hanging on was easier said than done, though, because at 13 hours and 30 minutes, Mimi messed up and let go of her button, cutting the playing field down to just... Two. I know you want this bad. 
but I'm here to tell you that if I had this week, you stay clean. The stakes were at an all-time high now. It was Cameron versus America with 23 minutes left. It was tense, and I could do nothing but hold my breath as the timer ticked down. 15 minutes left. 10 minutes. 7 minutes. 5 minutes. 4 minutes. And then, nothing. After 13 hours and 49 minutes, just 4 minutes shy of the all-time record, America let go of her button, crowning Cameron as the new HOH and ending the pressure cooker competition. Congratulations, Cameron, on conquering the pressure cooker and becoming the new head of household. Casey just said my name. How about them, baby? <laughs> 13 hours and 49 minutes. I had just stayed up all throughout the night, live streaming for the entirety of the competition, all for it to end four minutes shy of history. To be quite honest with you, I was devastated. In that moment, it felt like all of that time spent watching had been for nothing. It was in the palm of our hands and taken from us at the last second. But looking back, I think I was being a bit of a baby, and I really just needed a nap, because when I think about it now with a fresh set of eyes and a full night's sleep, I can't help but laugh. In an era where endurance competitions are typically over before you can say wall comp, we unexpectedly got a nearly 14 hour battle ending with a country boy and a country. And the fact that it fell short of the record by just four minutes is honestly iconic. And on top of that, the product that we got was absolutely incredible. The set design was fantastic. We had a group of players that were willing to go the distance. There was an actual good twist to the pressure cooker formula. Kaser was there to semi-host it. It wasn't corny. And overall, I really don't know what Big Brother could have done to make it any better. I never thought a competition would be able to rival the OG pressure cooker, but the revenge of the pressure cooker did a pretty damn good job. And I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to watch the entire thing happen live. It's me, Kaser. 18 years ago, I endured a grueling competition, the pressure cooker. And now, it's your turn. And there we go. At the end of the day, I am just so glad that the pressure cooker wasn't a total bust. My expectations are always too high, and I always have to prepare myself to be disappointed. But this was one of the few times where I was really blown away, and I love that. Hopefully you were able to enjoy the pressure cooker as much as I did. Well, except at like the six and a half hour mark, because that's when I got cranky, made a makeshift bed, and wanted to go to sleep. But other than that, it was a very fun time. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I, of course, need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members and patrons who I have the utmost faith would be able to last at least 13 hours and 54 minutes in the pressure cooker. And... I want to give an additional shout out to everyone who stayed up watching The Pressure Cooker alongside me over on Twitch. Without all of you, I definitely would not have made it through the entire night, and you all made the experience that much better for me. So thank you. And now, as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. Ugh. Cameron won. Now it's like, okay, let's see where the week is going to take us. Cameron winning is truly worst case scenario for me. We're just, we're not cool, you know? <laughs> We're not friends, so I'm really bummed about it.